Apple is an American company. Its products are assembled in China and now in India, but the heart of the tech giant's supply chain is in Taiwan. Five of the company's top 10 electronic equipment suppliers are in Taiwan, including arguably its two closest, Foxconn and TSMC. But uh, Foxconn serves as one of several assembly partners within the Apple supply chain, alongside fellow Taiwanese companies Pegatron and Wistrom. But there is only one TSMC. TSMC is the sole supplier of one of the most important aspects of the Apple strategy, its device semiconductors. In this video, I want to chronicle a beautiful relationship, one that made Apple a trillion dollar company and put TSMC on the cutting edge of semiconductor manufacturing. Steve Jobs unveiled Apple's first custom semiconductor chip in 2010 with the A4 in the first iPad. Two years earlier, Apple acquired a fabulous semiconductor firm called PA Semi for $276 million, explaining that they wanted to design system on chips for their devices. The Apple A4 was the first result of that effort. That first Apple A4 chip was fabbed at Samsung Foundry. Samsung had also provided the microprocessors for the first iPhone, the 3G, and the 3GS. They also provided several other critical components for the iPhone, like, you know, the screen. So it seemed logical that they would take on the task of fabbing Apple's first custom-designed SoC. But Samsung Electronics' entry into the mobile phone industry chilled the relationship. And then things got colder when Apple sued Samsung for intellectual property theft. No matter how much Samsung claimed that a Chinese wall, whatever that means, existed between the mobile phone and components division, Apple hated knowing that profits coming to the Korean giant via its components business would be used to compete with it in mobile phones. So Apple sought to diversify its supply chain and that led it to TSMC which has a stated business principle of never competing with its customers. On September 2014, Apple launched the iPhone 6's A8 processor, fabbed on TSMC's 20 nanometer process. Both parties had been talking since 2010, when Jeff Williams and Morris Chang first dined together in Taiwan, but it took several years to finally pull the trigger. With just one exception, Apple has stayed with TSMC as its sole supplier. But Apple must have been quite nervous and anxious about the risk of single sourcing its most critical component. There have been a few news reports of them attempting to find a second supplier for what they need. For the Apple A9, they tried to dual source from TSMC and Samsung. A small brouhaha arose when the media alleged that the Samsung chips had a worse battery life than the TSMC ones. Regardless of whether it was true, Apple said that the differences in real life were negligible, Apple stayed with single sourcing for every Apple design processor since. Apple is a demanding customer. TSMC has gone to unusual lengths to accommodate the tech giant and remain Apple's exclusive chip foundry. I wanna point out a few of these here. The first is the staggering upfront financial and resource investment. Jeff Williams, Apple's DOO, talked a little bit about it when he talked about how TSMC invested $9 billion and put 6,000 people to work in Tainan to help build a fab specifically for them. Few companies can afford this kind of financial commitment. SMIC, China mainland's leading foundry, raised $7.6 billion in a Shanghai IPO in 2020. TSMC spent $9 billion on just one fab for just one customer. Samsung announced to great fanfare a 10-year $116 billion plan for its foundry, but TSMC will spend $16 to $17 billion in capital expenditure for 2020 alone. The second thing in how uh, Apple has changed TSMC is how TSMC has subtly crafted its entire R&D and tech rollout strategy to accommodate Apple's product rollout strategy. It used to be TSMC used to roll out a new node whenever it was done, see the early parts of this timeline. But Apple puts out a new iPhone every year. As a result, they need a new, better, and high-yielding chip process each and every year. The foundry cannot afford to miss on this annual cycle, and thus it's become the TSMC equivalent of Moore's Law. But it can be really difficult to consistently develop an entirely new fab process on schedule. Intel tried it with its famous TikTok strategy, it has nothing to do with the social app, where it attempted to come up with a new node process roughly every 18 months to two years. And it worked. 
until it didn't, and the American giant found itself stuck at 14 nanometers for years. To get around this, TSMC created a half-step process strategy. They take an incremental 10-20% to 20 performance or power improvement each year, rather than a more ambitious jump every two years a la the Intel TikTok strategy. For example, let's look at the A12 and the A13. The A12 is fabbed on the 7 nanometer process, which is uh, internally in TSMC's world called the N7. 7 nanometers, by the way, same as 14 nanometers, and pretty much any time anyone says nanometers in the process world is a marketing term and is not correlated to any actual physical dimension on the chip, which is why TSMC refers to it as N7, N7P, N5, etc., etc. on their calls. The A13 is fabbed on the N7P, the next half-step improvement on the N7. The half-process strategy allows TSMC to hone and refine its latest cutting-edge technology step-by-step step without unnecessary large risks. EUV, for example, I talked a bit about in another video of mine. When it came to using this unruly new technology, TSMC progressively dipped its toe little by little. An approach different from those taken by Intel and Samsung. It would allow them to be the first foundry to ship chips with full EUV at high yield in 2020. This reliability, predictability, and learning through iteration is ultimately more important than shooting the moon on risky new technologies. This methodology again is visible in TSMC's recently unveiled technology symposium. There they announced that their forthcoming N3 node, which is the next step after the steps N5, which is right now being used for the A14 chip, and next year's N5P, which would be probably used for the A15 chip, would not be using the next sexy revolutionary nanotechnique, something called Gate All Around or GAA. The reason for this is clear. N3 will not be using GAA because Apple cannot afford the risk of this technique failing to hit Apple's annual iPhone cycle. In return for all of this, Apple has richly rewarded the foundry. Today, Apple is TSMC's single biggest customer. In 2019, Apple represented 23% of TSMC's annual revenue, roughly about $8.2 billion. Huawei, the infamous Chinese company, I guess you can call it, is its second largest customer, representing $5 billion in revenue. Apple has put TSMC at the heart of the mobile arm revolution, supercharging its revenues and profits. You can see there's a big step jump at 2014. In 2020, TSMC celebrated 1 billion chips shipped with their 7 nanometer process. To be able to create and ship so many chips using a process that is just barely 2 years old, that is the value of being able to sell to Apple and why TSMC shifted all of their processes to accommodate. An unappreciated fact in all of this, and a reason why TSMC pushed so hard, is that Apple is one of the few companies in the world that wants and can afford to pay top dollar for chips made using cutting edge processes. A TSMC 5 nanometer wafer is estimated to cost $17,000 each. This wafer can be cut into many little chips. If the yield is good, then each chip costs some $20 or $30. For a $1,000 phone, $20 or $30 for a single but critical component is not significant. Many of TSMC's other traditional customers, like MediaTek and Qualcomm, on the other hand, do not sell $1,000 phones or even finished consumer products. They sell chips. Thus, the cost of the chip directly affects their profit. Samsung's cheaper prices will definitely catch their eye. With Huawei no longer able to book orders with TSMC, Apple is now unquestionably TSMC's most important customer. The recent news of them booking TSMC's entire N5 capacity makes it clear. For now, the relationship seems secure and mutually beneficial. For Apple, there's no other legitimate substitute for what TSMC provides, and they have tried. TSMC needs the money from Apple's titanic checks to keep pushing the envelope on cutting-edge technologies as advanced as anything that sent us to the moon. Well, we're done, but bonus question. And this question, I can't even believe I have to say something about it, but I keep seeing it on message boards and Hacker News, so I got to... I gotta, I gotta answer it. And the answer is no. 
Apple is not going to buy TSMC. The ostensible reason why people think Apple should buy TSMC is because Apple, as a company, likes vertical integration. They want to bring more things in-house, yada, yada, yada. In that case, then they should be buying Foxconn as well, but they haven't. Let me add a few more reasons why, in case the point isn't exactly clear. First, Apple doesn't have the money. TSMC's market cap right now is $389 billion. TSMC is the ninth largest company on the listed stock market right now by market cap. It's around the same size as Tesla, Visa, and Nvidia right now. As of the last earnings report, Apple had some $190 billion of cash on hand, but the company also has some $100 billion of debt, money it took out using that cash as collateral so that it can buy back stock. Second, Apple has no value to add here. In fact, they are likely to destroy it. TSMC's entire business model is to be a neutral third party that fabs your chips. They don't compete with their customers. Apple buying them would destroy this entire value proposition and it would be like setting on fire so much of the 400 some billion dollars you just laid down to buy this company. Last and most importantly, TSMC is Taiwan's flagship company. Taiwan is literally in the company's name. The Taiwanese government will block the transaction. They will block the transaction even if the attempted buyer is American, a critical Taiwanese ally. China has been trying to buy TSMC for years now to no avail. Why would an American succeed? And the fact is, Taiwan sees TSMC as the crown jewel of its economy. By itself, the company represents some 50% of the nation's entire R&D spending. Selling it off would spark an uproar, and political heads will roll. The story of ARM in the UK notwithstanding. Control is not for sale at any price. All right, everyone. Have a good evening. Stay safe.